He's a congressman barely on the job for a year, but George Santos of New York could soon be out of a job. The House Ethics Committee filed a resolution to expel the Republican congressman, calling him unfit to serve because he is, quote, committed egregious violations. It's a scathing report laid out in evidence that Santos used campaign funds to pay for things like Botox, personal meals, a handbag worth four grand. It also accuses him of defrauding donors, filing false campaign reports. All of that would violate federal law. A vote on his expulsion could come after Thanksgiving. Santos has already said he will not be seeking re-election. You may as well be completely honest now. Of course. Because I don't say there's any upside in continuing to fuel the media narrative that you're this terrible liar, right? So, you know, I'm very... I, I, listen, I don't have a horse in the race. I'm not an American citizen. <laughs> you're not my congressman. You don't serve me. It's not my hard-earned cash going on supporting you. So, in that sense, I'm slightly detached from this. All I can say is that in the UK, we're aware of you because there's been this constant running theme now for months on end that you tell a lot of whoppers, as we would call it, in the UK. And so I think it's a good, it's a good chance, Congressman, to just try and work out where the truth lies. Because why not? Um, there's a claim that you said you attended the Horace Mann School in the Bronx, New York, during your first years of high school, but had to leave uh, in your senior year because your parents fell on hard times in 2008. Is that true? Did you attend that school? I attended it for a brief period of time and then went back to the public school system and then dropped out of the public school system and attained a GED. I was always very truthful of not completing high school due to financial difficulties. With I, I mean, a spokesman for the school told CNN there's no record of you ever attending. Why would that be? Uh, I, I challenge to see what, they're, what name they're looking under. If you look at my entire history of education, it was not under the name George Santos. So I just, what, what name did you attend that school? Uh, a, a variation. It was either George DeVolder or Anthony DeVolder. I wouldn't know. I was a minor. I don't know which but way. CNN, I believe, checked all the variants of the names that you've used, and there was no record the school could find of you ever attending. I was there for six months of ninth grade. In what year would that have been? Uh, 2004. So for six months, you were indisputably at the Horace yes. Mann School in the and then moved into And then moved into the public system. And then in 2006, I attained a GED due to just circumstances. Why, why, why would the school not be able to find a record of I don't know. Uh, what I don't what know. name should they be looking for? I would say George DeVolder. That's how, I, that's how it's on my uh, GED certificate. Well, you got on the George DeVolder, Anthony DeVolder. Well, th officially, the only two names I've ever used on documentation has been George DeVolder or George Santos. Period. So there should be a record of one of those yeah. at that school. Of course. I'll try to be short on this one. This is just, there's so much. I, I'll fill your bingo card in my first video if we're not careful. He starts off with a pitch change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear his voice change when he goes at, of course. You may as well be completely honest now. Of course. He immediately goes into something I always refer to as sacred space, where he puts his hands together. That gives him distance. That gives him a, a barrier. And then he mills his fingers and thumbs. That's an adapter to make that space comfortable. It's a powerful tool. However, Joe Navarro says when you're steepling or have your hands closed and you use your thumb, you're confident. When you don't use your thumbs, you're not. So there's no confidence in him when we see this. It's a good chance, Congressman, to just try and work out where the truth lies. Because why not? Um, he purses his lips. Sometimes people point with their lips in some cultures. It's disapproval in most of ours. Now let's talk about the horse man school. And there was no record the school could find of you ever attending. I was there for six months of ninth grade. In what year would that have been? Uh, 2004. He went to horseman school. He went to the horseman school for the academically delayed, and he failed math because he tells us in here what year he, he was born in 1988. He says he was in the ninth grade and he was 16 years old. I don't know that horseman school takes 16 year old ninth graders every day, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. And we'll hear his math screw up as he goes through. And you see him try to do math, try to do something in there. But I don't think that this guy went there and I think he's just wherever. Also watch his blink rate increase and go through the roof when he's poked about horse man. And then his chin drop, his respiration rises and it gets shallow. He chaffs and redirects beautifully. I attended it for a brief period of time and then went back to the public school system and then dropped out of the public school system and attained a GED. I was always very truthful of not completing high school due to financial difficulties. When you ask how this guy got away with all this, he is one of the most elegant chaff and redirect guys I've seen because he smoothly does it. He doesn't do it in a big fashion. He finds a small topic that will take him off and runs down it. Then he gets to that GED thing. It's a beautiful way. 
But Piers Morgan is a pretty damn good interviewer, and he asked the hardest question, and that's why. I mean, a spokesman for the school told CNN there's no record of you ever attending. Why would that be? And then he goes, but yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I challenge to see what they're, what name they're looking under. If you look at my entire history of education, it was not under the name George Santos. And the only name he didn't use is Vinny, is in my cousin Vinny, because he's using the my cousin Vinny method of delaying the the judge from finding out he's not an attorney. He just gives extra names and extra names and extra names. Everything I see here, I think the only time I see him do anything that looks reasonable in that, and guys, I'm just going to knock this off because I'm going to keep going. There's a ton in here. But he does do the Joe Navarro thumbs up when he says that, when he says I was under a different name because he thinks he's got it and he doesn't allow him to get away with it. He just nails him down. Mark, what do you got? Uh, yeah, well, look, Piers Morgan p- can be a real pain sometimes, but here he's an a- absolute delight throughout all of this. Uh, love him dearly throughout all of this. Great target uh, for him. All I can say is in the UK, we're aware of you because there's been this constant running theme now for months on end that you tell a lot of whoppers, as we would call it, in the UK. So, Piers, great great use of the idea of the whopper, which is very colloquial for the UK. Uh, it'd be lovely if further on he uses the idea of telling pork pies or porkies, <laughs> which is Cockney rhyming slang for pork pie, lie. Just just wanted you to know that, you know, so you, you've got a little bit of Cockney rhyming slang in, in case that comes up. Um, I think I see Duper's delight early on. I wouldn't be surprised if I do. I mean, it could be contempt, it could be disdain, but I don't, I don't see anything that it would be to do with. So I'm going to go that he knows he's, he's going to start his process of making up stories right from moment one. I see eye blocks. And what I mean by that is the lids will come down, the, the, the head will shade a little bit. So it's not really, you know, a look off or, or a, or a blink or even a slow blink. It's a real shading of, of the eyes, you know, not wanting to see almost this terrible situation that you've got yourself into. Lots of swallow uh, reflex there as well, more than I would expect to see in succession, even under under the pressure of a national interview. Um, Eyes glance off. I would say that's probably exit checking. Uh, That fight and flight is starting, the pressure of lying is starting, and and his unconscious is going, well, how would I run away out of this if I needed to? Uh, I I saw the lip purse as well. Yeah, absolutely on. Why not tell the truth? There's a lip purse there. Disagreement with telling the truth, potentially there. Um, uh, Targeting of the eyes as well. And on the yes, there's a single shoulder shrug. So for six months, you were indisputably at the horrors. Yeah, that's not good to see. Chase, I don't know whether you've done a behavioral table of elements score here. I would, I would love it if you have, if, if you, if you have, if you haven't, just make one up. Cause I, I just want to, I just want to see what the number is here. Because I think I'm going to, I'm going to pretty much leave it at body language for that. Because that was, that was a huge, huge amount, huge amount and tackle some other stuff as we go, go through. Uh, so Chase, will you disappoint me or, or what do you got on this? 36. Oh, okay. Lovely. Thank you. Come on. I was going to give him 168. (laughs) (laughs) This, uh, just for clarification's sake, you need a score of 11 or higher to be considered a a likelihood of deception. So 36 is uh, astounding. But one thing here, there's disdain, I think, coming across the face, Mark, to your point, but it's right when he's told the media have a narrative that he's a terrible liar. Terrible liar. Not a liar, a bad one. I don't say there's any upside in continuing to fuel the media narrative that you're this terrible liar, right? So so one big thing I was thinking uh, watching this was this looks like it might be disdain or contempt for being called a bad liar, as if there were a degree of pride maybe in his abilities. So six months as a student there during this little part, there's a single shrug there, the unusual deviation in eye blocking. Mark, you picked up on that. And just the shortest answer yet from uh, all of his baseline, super short answer there. And this guy has the vibe of kind of a grandiose high school bully that everyone in the school secretly knew hated themselves. And a lot of this comes down to a person that is hiding shame. And I want you to remember those two words as we go through the the rest of this video, a person that's hiding shame. What does hiding secret shame make me do publicly? What does that make 
into a person's character or behavior. That's all I got for that one. Scott. All right. Here now, this is just my opinion, but Mark, what you're talking about about seeing the duper's delight, I don't think that's what it is. And Chase, the same thing for that. I don't think he feels proud about doing that. He likes what he's doing. This is a con man. Now, this is just my opinion. So don't come at me. Um, what's his name? George. But this is what I think about, about him or you. I think this is a con man and he's doing what he always does. So he feels comfortable here. No matter what you throw at him, he's like, let's play the game because it's a game to him. He's having fun. He This doesn't bother him. Not even a little bit. So in my opinion, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing somebody go in and enjoy what they're doing because they're good at it. He knows this game. He knows how to lie. He knows how to do this. We're going to see everything in this. This is beautiful. We're going to see the just bull face line. We're going to see um, the, the smile and line, like we're talking about, the, the enjoyment of line, a hard eye contact. Um, he doubles down on his lies. We see everything in this. It's it's unbelievable. This in this series of, vid- of videos, when he first starts, you see, uh, and before he starts answering answering the question, that forehead comes down. He scoots in a little bit. He's ready for the fight at that point. He's he's. It's like the bullfighter has, has come out with a thing, and he's like, "All right, let's do this." He's ready for it. Keep an eye on his teeth and his tongues and on his tongues and his tongue in his mouth. Watch <laughs> what happens there. Watch when he says under. He says under. I challenge to see what they're what name they're looking under. If it seems odd and it's and it sounds kind of weird, but you really have to pay attention to what he's saying there because that's how he's adapting. He's using his mouth to adapt. He's done some with his lips. He's he's done those fillers or something because his lips are all like like fish mouth the whole time. And they look odd. His his lips don't look normal. Something's not right about that. But that's where he's adapting. His tongue juts around in there. It's flying around in there. Keep an eye on that because we see some adapting in his hands, but we don't see anywhere else. But he's still on. He's still feeling that excitement. He's still got all that stress and, and tension from, from being on TV and, and the sport he's playing now of lying because he's a pathological liar. That sport is on, so he's got to somehow get rid of that built-up stress and tension by adapting or self-soothing behaviors, as Joe Navarro says, and he's doing it with his mouth and inside his mouth. Listen to to the words he uses. The pronunciation of these words he uses is really important. Listen to how the, the sentences go from really short, like you were saying, uh, Chase, these really short answers and short sentences, and a few minutes are going to get so long. Listen to this progression as it goes as it goes on, how the sentences get longer and longer and longer. At one point, they become three times as long as they are in the first video. So far, we've seen eye blocking. We've seen um, the head shaking in agreement, and the eye blocking when he gets when he gets the information that he uh, isn't believed or is called a liar. That's where his eyes stay. And Chase refers to that to shutter speed. They say close too long uh, when he blinks. He he blinks for too long. We're seeing everything in this. Um, I can I can go on and on about this, but he's laser focused on everything happening and everything he's saying. And one more thing, I know what you're going to jump on, Greg, is the shoulder, one single shoulder and the chin. One. Because it, most of the time, we're not absolutes on here, but every time, pretty much every time we see someone with a single shoulder shrug and that chin goes over there, even Joe Navarro talks about that and says it's, it's every time we've seen it, that person's end up li- been lying about something. Doesn't mean they, it, that it's a, it's a tell for sure that when your single shoulder goes up and your chin heads toward it, you're lying, but that's all we've seen on here every time it happens. So I'll, I've got a ton, but I'll, I'll leave it there. I got the one more years, one people. more years that you didn't mention, Scott. What was it? One more years is extra face. Cause he's doing extra face. Oh, while he's waiting. Yeah. Dad gum. It's a beautiful I'm, example of it. And it yeah. just, you cannot miss it. The eyewitness is you. Is you may as well be completely honest now. Of course. Because I don't say there's any upside in continuing to fuel the media narrative that you're this terrible liar, right? So, you know, I'm very... I, I, listen, I don't have a horse in the race. I'm not an American citizen. <laughs> you're not my congressman. You don't serve me. It's not my hard-earned cash going on supporting you. So, in that sense, I'm slightly detached from this. All I can say is that in the UK, we're aware of you because there's been this constant running theme now for months on end that you tell a lot of whoppers, as we would call it, in the UK. And so I think it's a good good chance, Congressman, to just try and work out where the truth lies. Because why not? Um, There's a claim that you said you attended the Horace Mann School in the Bronx, New York, during your first years of high school. 
that had to leave uh, in your senior year because your parents fell on hard times in 2008. Is that true? Did you attend that school? I attended it for a brief period of time and then went back to the public school system and then dropped out of the public school system and attained a GED. I was always very truthful of not completing high school due to financial difficulties. With I, I mean, a spokesman for the school told CNN there's no record of you ever attending. Why would that be? Uh, I, I challenge to see what, they're, what name they're looking under. If you look at my entire history of education, it was not under the name George Santos. So I just, what, what name did you attend that school? Uh, a, a variation. It was either George DeVolder or Anthony DeVolder. I wouldn't know. I was a minor. I don't know which but way. CNN, I believe, checked all the variants of the names that you've used, and there was no record the school could find of you ever attending. I was there for six months of ninth grade. In what year would that have been? Uh, 2004. So for six months, you were indisputably at the Horace yes. Mann School in the and then moved into And then moved into the public system. And then in 2006, I attained a GED due to just circumstances. Why, why, why would the school not be able to find a record of I don't know. Uh, what I don't what know. name should they be looking for? I would say George DeVolder. That's how, I, that's how it's on my uh, GED certificate. Well, you got on the George DeVolder, Anthony DeVolder. Well, th officially, the only two names I've ever used on documentation has been George DeVolder or George Santos. Period. So there should be a record of one of those yeah. at that school. Of course. Congressman George Santos has officially been expelled from Congress, making him the sixth member of the House of Representatives to be forced out, the very first Republican member of the House to be forced out of Congress. This momentum has been growing for months, and this could not have happened today without the support of Republicans. In the end, you had more than 100 Republicans say that they support this push to expel Congressman George Santos from the House. From the moment that he walked through the doors here on Capitol Hill, he has been defiant. He's been accused of lying about his professional resume and his background. Then he pleaded not guilty to those 23 federal charges, including identity theft, unemployment fraud, and wire fraud. But it really was this latest report from the House Ethics Committee, which was blistering, accusing him of blatantly stealing from his campaign, using that money to fund trips to Atlantic City, even on Botox designer goods. That really caused this momentum to start to grow. As of right now, Congressman George Santos is no longer a member of Congress. You claimed on your resume to have gained a master's in business at New York University with a GMAT of 710, I, I've, which, would, which would indicate academic excellence. But that's not true, right? Well, the reality is I don't know where that GMAT comes from. I, I never put that out on my website or my bio. But you didn't get a master's in business? No, no, but I'm just saying that. The GMAT was on your resume, I think. At which the resume was never furnished or, or supplied by me. Who supplied that? I, I have no idea where that came from. Well, someone that, did it on your behalf. I'm not saying no. I, I didn't supply it, and mm. nobody associated with me supplied it. That came from the GOP, and I'm still trying to understand where that came from. But you never got a master's in business at New York University? No, no like I said, no. Right. I mean, again, <laughs> did you not think people would find this out? You know, Pierce, not after I you're had... Not, you're not running to be like a reality TV no, star. No, no, I understand. Right? You know, if you, if you were going on Celebrity Apprentice, which I went on, right, it doesn't matter. You can embellish stuff about yourself. Nobody cares, right? But to run for Congress of the United States and to just tell blatant lies about even your academic record, I'm just struck, not necessarily that a politician would lie, but that you would think no one would find out. Well... I'll, I'll humor you this. I ran in 2020 for the same exact seat um, for Congress, and I got away with it then, and I guess... Right. Well, that's honest. Stupid. So you thought, actually, they don't, they're not going to find out? No, I didn't think so. But to, to that effect, um, it's an embarrassing. It's, it's humbling to have to admit your faults as a human mm. being. And I, you know, I wish... Genuinely, if the media put the equal amount of efforts and resources, and, and I'm not saying this mm. as villainizing the media, but just let's keep it fair, on all 435 members of the House and 100 members of the Senate, I think the American people would have more clarity of who represents them in Congress. I'm not saying... I'm well, not I would say, I, listen, I think the media, both at local level and national level, have pretty well been forensic about everyone that's in Congress, right? I mean, maybe not to quite the degree you've had to sustain it, because they knew with you they had basically a wounded animal, and if they kept going long enough, they'd probably find a load more. Right, you know, it's human nature. All right, Mark, what do you got?
Yeah, just one thing on this which really kind of interests me is the wounded animal metaphor that comes up there. The idea that um, this subject here is now a wounded animal that the media has kind of come in to feed on or predate upon. Now, why is that an interesting metaphor? Because it might just work for him. If he could be that underdog, if he could be the fully wounded animal, maybe people would feel sorry for him, cut him a break as he's uh, as he's asking for there, you know, he said in in the last uh, the last video, you know, I've made peace with it. And Greg, as you said, maybe other people should make peace with it. Let me off the hook. Let this one go because look, I'm wounded. You've done the damage. It's a good story. It's a good drama that could work for him. So I'm interested to see whether he holds on to that, keeps that one going, or whether he's going to let that one uh, that one go. You know, it's interesting because it's it's that kind of Cinderella story of inside something very very mundane like lying, which everybody does. Of course, everybody does it to greater or lesser degrees. Inside that that mundane thing might be something really, really wonderful and beautiful. And he's kind of playing that Cinderella story with in, inside my mundane lying actually is some self-revelation, some destruction of the structural e exclusivity of politics. Um, the feeding frenzy will turn into forgiveness and it all be beautiful again. Let's see whether it works for him. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? All right, right out of the gate, we're seeing, um, we're, we're, we're hearing in other words, fading facts and things starts getting quiet there. Well, the reality is I don't know where that GMAT comes from. I, I never put that out on my website or my bio. He's seen his own bio online that says what he believes to be is untrue, but he didn't take it down, didn't get it fixed, didn't have anybody take care of that for him. Doesn't really, not really sure who did that. He thinks he is, he thinks he's sure, but he's not really that sure. So we'll be sure that we're watching that chin come down as from the very first video, we're going to see the whole thing come down to where he's like this when he's talking. So keep an eye on his chin as we go through this. And the way he's answering, I don't think Pierce was ready for this again here because he just agrees with everything. And then he just sits there and waits. He goes, yeah, I did that. You never got a master's in business at New York. No, no like I said, no. Right. And just... There it is. Then what do you do at that point? Because Pierce is ready. He's, he's up and ready to start swinging with him. And he really doesn't give him a chance to do that. The one thing we haven't heard him say so far, and we won't hear him say, is he's sorry or he apologizes. Not once. So be sure and pay attention to that. He's not sorry for what he's doing. He likes what he's doing. The level of narcissism here is through the roof. This guy is not only malignant, this is clinical. He's got a, He's not a psychopath, I don't think. But he, he has he has no, no he doesn't feel empathy for anyone from we're going to find out a little bit later on from some of the things he does or, or has done. Um, and then when he allegedly. says stupid, allegedly yeah. done. Uh, but again, like I said, it's just my opinion. So don't come at me, bro, if you do. Mm. Anyway, I hope you don't. Um, did you see that uh, chin go through, the, go toward the, the single shoulder shrug again? And then when he says um, it's embarrassing and humbling, his illustrators don't connect with what he's doing. It's an embarrassing. It's it's humbling to have to admit your faults as a human being. Everything is out of is out of place here. His illustrators aren't where they should be. He's when he talks, it gets a little bit quieter. These are all kinds of red flags you can see on things like this. Be sure you pay attention to the way you feel when you see this guy talking, because that's part of your brain in there, which I go through every time I want this time. That's letting you know, gives you, gentlemen, gives you the gut, your gut feeling, and oh, ladies or women, it gives you, that's the woman's intuition you're feeling. Don't forget how that feels, because this is the way it feels when a con is talking to you, when they're trying to talk you into doing something you don't want to do, sell you something, whatever it is, when you get this feeling, heads up. Uh, then we see another brilliant chaff and redirect by talking about the the resources being aimed at others besides him by making sure he tells what the problem is, but it's not just me. And here's what you should be looking at over it's literally chaff and redirect at that point. I wish genuinely if the media put the equal amount of efforts and resources, and, and I'm not saying this mm. as villainizing the media, but just let's keep it fair on all 435 members of the House and 100 members of the Senate. And then we see contempt on the uh, right side of his face, and he sticks through his, his tongue through his teeth. Remember I said keep an eye on that? 
it's really quickly just pops out through there. Now, quite often what you'll see with children and someone who, who feels like they've gotten away with something, they'll stick their tongue out through their teeth and they'll bite on it a little bit. He's always biting on his tongue. He's always got things move around in there. Again, I think this is a form of, of adapting for him because he's got so much going on as he's going, uh, as he's weaving his way through this, this game he's playing with peers. Uh, I'll leave it there because I'm going to go on and on. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I'm going to tell you this is Anna Delvey as a guy. That's who this is. And I'm going to show you why and why I love this video more than any other video in this whole thing. He starts off, this guy was working when he turned over the stone, when he did the thing that I said earlier, he turned over the first stone so you wouldn't look any further. That was a massive redirect. Hey, yes, my education is an issue. And he moves on into the same question. The redirect, the redirect is working, in his opinion. And Scott, I think that's why he's not trying to cover anything up. He thinks, smooth, I got it. He's got a set on him because this is Piers Morgan. This is not the average person you go and try to snuggle up to. He's a little harder to snuggle up to. And he does a really good job of that redirect. What, what's happening here is he starts down the path. And when you listen to what a person says and watch their body language, it's telling. You can't miss it if you pay attention to this guy. He does a televangelist hands, picks it up, looks straight down the camera, and he says, admitting it's the first step. Well, that right there is a powerful, powerful, powerful statement. Then he goes into a long vowel extension at now. Now. And he's moving in to ask for forgiveness is what he's trying to do. And then he makes the biggest mistake he makes in this entire video. He assumes, much like Anna Delby did with Ian from the Australian 60 Minutes, that he's got him. And he tries to build rapport. And he says the stupidest single thing you could probably say to Pierce Morgan. And you've been through this, Pierce. Because he has. He's had his own scandal. Watch the body language change. As Piers Morgan rebraces, pushes his arms forward, his chin juts forward, works his jaw, purses his lips, it's starting to get ugly now. He's going to now come back at him pretty hard. If you're trying to build rapport and you want to use negativity, you better damn well know who you're using negativity with. And this is not the guy to pick that fight with because now he's going to come back at you. And if you're, if you're not certain that's going on, look for that thrust jaw, that squirming mouth and him drumming his thumbs, drumming his fingers. He's been very patient and now listening to this guy, but now he's just waiting for the next thing. I'll leave it at that. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I think this is a lot like the Alex Murdoch trial. The admissions are only coming when he's found out, when everything is found out. That's when the admissions come. My wife has the best intuition in my lifetime I've ever seen in a human being. Better than mine, probably, but I would say yes, better than all these guys. And I let her watch 20 seconds, just 20 seconds of this clip right here. Didn't give her any background. She didn't know who it was. And she physically shuddered <laughs> watching this. And I just asked, like, how do you feel? Like, well, how do you feel after watching that? And she said, I would not allow him within a thousand feet of our children from 20 seconds of just random 20 second clip of in, in the middle of this. So his underlying message is that the media would find stuff on everybody if they were equally scrutinizing everybody. And right there, right at that moment, he revealed everything. He thinks that everyone does this. He assumes everyone has really, really bad skeletons in their closet because all of us, we tend to think that people are just like us. And if you want to know how someone secretly feels about something, you only have to ask them how they think most other people feel about it. And they'll give you the secret answer. So if you live your life actually thinking that everyone else is hiding lots of skeletons and secrets just like you, what might that say about a potential pathology in your behavior or personality? The eyewitness is you. You claimed on your resume to have gained a master's in business at New York University with a GMAT of 710, I, I've, which, would, which would indicate academic excellence. But that's not true, right? Well, the reality is I don't know where that GMAT comes from. I, I never put that out on my website or my bio. But you didn't get a master's in business. No, no, but I'm just saying that. The GMAT was on your resume, I think. At which the resume was never furnished or, or supplied by me. Who supplied that? I have no idea where that came from. Well, someone that, did it on your behalf. I'm not saying no. I, I didn't supply it, and mm. nobody associated with me supplied it. That came from the GOP, and I'm still trying to understand where that came from. But you never got a master's in business at New York University? No, no like I said, no. Right. I mean, again, 
Did you not think people would find this out? You know, Pierce, not after I you're had... Not, you're not running to be like a reality TV no, star. No, no, I understand. Right? You know, if you, if you were going on Celebrity Apprentice, which I went on, right, it doesn't matter. You can embellish stuff about yourself. Nobody cares, right? But to run for Congress of the United States and to just tell blatant lies about even your academic record, I'm just struck, not necessarily that a politician would lie, but that you would think no one would find out. Well, I'll, I'll humor you this. I ran in 2020 for the same exact seat um, for Congress, and I got away with it then, and I guess... Right. Well, that's honest. Stupid. So you thought, actually, they don't, they're not going to find out? No, I didn't think so. But to, to that effect, um, it's an embarrassing. It's, it's humbling to have to admit your faults as a human mm. being. And I, you know, I wish, genuinely, if the media put the equal amount of efforts and resources, and, and I'm not saying this mm. as villainizing the media, but just let's keep it fair, on all 435 members of the House and 100 members of the Senate, I think the American people would have more clarity of who represents them in Congress. I'm not saying, I'm well, not I pointing... Well, I would say, I, listen, I think the media, both at local level and national level, have pretty well been forensic about everyone that's in Congress, right? I mean, maybe not to quite the degree you've had to sustain it, because they knew with you they had basically a wounded animal, and if they kept going long enough, they'd probably find a load more. Right, you know, see too many. So what do you got?